Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in the series on the overhaul of this Gardner 6LXB. In the last video we got it as stripped as far as you can see here. Um, so we'll get straight back into it and we'll stop if we find anything of interest. Um, but we'll start by getting the uh, alternator and the injector pump drive and associated uh, bits and pieces off. Bit of corrosion, but generally okay. Bit of play in the bearing, but generally not too bad. So, as we said on the last engine, normally if you were taking this apart to go back together again with the cams and the followers untouched, you'd want to mark all of these so that they go back in the same place. Um, but as we'll be reprofiling the cams and um, reprofiling the cam um, the ends of the followers, uh, we'll just remove these because it doesn't matter where they go back to afterwards. It is important, however, that we keep the follower body and the tappet itself together, though. Not horrendous. The alternator and its drive shaft are now all gone. Um, like the last LXB we did, this bush has actually got some wear in it, so that will get replaced along with the bearings as we rebuild the engine. Um, we have also removed the nut from the crankshaft pulley. Uh, we did that while the flywheel was on the other end. It's just a bit easier to lock the engine because that is very tight. So with the flywheel off at the other end, I've removed the end cover here and the crankshaft pulley. Uh, I've also removed the dynamo drive and taken the gear off the end of the camshaft. So um, next thing we're going to do is pull the camshaft out, get all the camshaft and its lobe segments out of the way. Um, and then the next job will be to unbolt the sump. Now with a bit of uh, carbon build up on the camshaft, that what makes it um, that's what makes it a little bit difficult to pull out. Um, but once you get it past that, it will come out quite easily. So here we go, first lobe out. Um, 
These black marks here are just marks. They're not uh, scratch scores or anything. You can't feel them. Um, there's a little bit of wear on the tops of the cams there. Uh, certainly worse than they were in the last engine we did, but uh, they're certainly not terrible. Next one, again, not horrendous. So again, this is cylinder fours. Not too bad. Cylinder three. A uh, few worse scores on that one there, but uh, uh, not horrendous. Cylinder twos. And finally, cylinder ones. Now, here is also the collar that controls the end float on the camshaft. And here we go, here's the camshaft out. Um, obviously you've got these discoloured areas which are uh, bits that are exposed inside the engine when it's running. So uh, you have bearing would have been sat here cam lobe segment here so when I first had to start pulling it it's getting it over the subtle carbon build up that's here and bits of corrosion um, but no the camshaft's in good condition there's no uh, big worn areas on it so we'll get it cleaned up and mic'd up and that will probably be fine. We now have the sump off which is always a fun job because most of the fasteners that secure it on uh, where they're positioned on the engine uh, means that they can't be removed with uh, power tools so they have to be all undone by hand pretty much so uh, makes it very time consuming but anyway it's off now and um, generally not horrendous a um, bit of sludge in the bottom and I don't know whether you can see down through the filter if not when we remove the filter I'll show you but um, you can see there's Appears to have been a little bit of emulsified oil in here. So I think if we take this off, we'll find that there's a bit of watery sludge underneath it, uh, which would sort of be indicative that um, while it's been laid up for many years, uh, a bit of water's got in the bottom end of the engine. But anyway, we'll get the sump out of the way and move on to get the oil pump and uh, main gallery pipe work off so that we can get the uh, comrades out. We now have it led on its side, um, but for those who watched the series on the last LXB, we actually had this stood up on end in that video, um, and that was because at this end of the engine it had an automotive backplate, so uh, you had a nice big flat area to stand on, and that made it a bit easier to work on. But uh, this one doesn't have that, so we've led it on the side. We will now get the oil pump and the pipe work off, uh, and then we can get the comrods out and take a look at the big end bearings and the big end journals. Um, and then we will turn the engine right upside down uh, to take the crank out. So with the main gallery pipe work out of the way, we can move on to taking the comrods out. So we'll uh, work our way through, get them all out, um, and then we'll show you what the bearings look like once they're uh, all removed.
With all the comrades now out, we can take a look at the bearings. Um, it's a little bit interesting on this engine. There's similar levels of wear to the last LXB we did. However, um, you can see the amount of wear here and here and here, and this is uh, cylinders four, five, and six. But when you come across to cylinders one, two, and three, so this is number three, number one, there's uh, quite a lot less wear on the bearings on those three cylinders. So there's a bit of uneven wear across this engine. It's not consistent across all six big end bearings. So with the com rods removed and the block now upside down for crank removal, uh, before we let the main bearing caps go, we'll just do a quick check of crankshaft end float so we know what we're dealing with. Um, the crank is currently pushed fully this way, so we'll just pry it back this way and see how much play we've got. So we have 0.21 millimetres of end float. Now that is uh, a little tiny bit over eight foul, but not quite eight and a half. Um, so we'll note that down so that we can make sure that uh, we've got the right thrust washers in stock when we come to put the engine back together again. With the end float now measured, next job is to let all the main bearing cat nuts go. So we'll get that done. Um, before lifting the mains off and uh, take a look what the bearings look like. So with the nuts and the caps off, uh, the next job is to actually pull the main bearings out. Now, um, a few people asked in the videos for the last one how you do that. Um, because it's quite long-winded and a pain in the bum, I didn't film it last time. But uh, this, this is a main bearing cap puller for one of these. Um, this one's old and quite well abused, but it still does the job. So we'll get these pulled out um, so we can take a look at the bearings. Uh, basically, there's four small dimples in the side of the um, each cap, um, and these nuts secure in one side, and the uh, there's pins on the other side that go in the other side, um, and that that grips it so that you can take the main cap off. There we go, that's one out. Now we'll now work our way down through the rest. So with the main bearing caps off, um, take a quick look at the journals um, and the big ends. Um, there's a little bit of marking on them, but nothing you can feel. Um, so at the very least, the crank's going to need a polish, but uh, we will get the micrometers out and... Uh, measure up and see whether it's a polish or it needs a grind to an undersize. Um, the main bearings are standard on this engine, um, as are the big ends at the moment. So uh, we're going to lift the crank so that we can look at the bearings um, that are still underneath it, um, alongside the main bearing caps that we've removed. So here we are with all the main bearings from the engine removed. Um, these are the upper shell, so not expecting to see a lot of wear on these. Um, and then these are the lower shelves that the crank actually runs on most of the time. So um, you could see, similar to the last engine, uh, we've got uneven wear down through the main bearings. Um, there's a bit of uh, heat scoring on the flywheel end. Um, you can see the bearing has 
picked up in a few areas. I mean, it's, you, you can't feel it, but it doesn't look look great. Um, this one's quite worn down to the copper. This one is worse. Um, unlike the last LXB we did, which didn't really have any wear on the centre main, this one, this one has. Um, the thrust bearings are all okay. Um, obviously, the end floats uh, right at the upper end of the limit, but um, they're not excessively worn. Um, again, worn on that one, worn on that one, and then the forward end one, um, clearly used, obviously, and dirty, but it's uh, not terrible. Um, when we look at the uh, upper bearing shells, There we go. Anyway, we will uh, obviously get the crank all measured up and uh, work out whether it's a polish and standard bearings or whether it is a uh, re-grind and undersize. And as I said earlier, these are all standard bearings at the moment, so the crank hasn't been re-ground in the past. So uh, we'll take a quick look at the crankcase and then that is us all, uh, all done and stripped. So here we go. The uh, crankcase is now fully stripped. Um, there's a few small studs and bits and pieces I will take out off camera. Um, that's just to make it a bit easier to tape up when we come to um, prep and paint. Um, but um, in general, it's not horrendous inside. Um, it should clean up quite well. Um, not horrendously dirty. Uh, so anyway, thank you for watching the video. Um, this engine is now going to go into storage. Now we know what is... Uh, wrong with it and what is needed um, and we will be focusing on uh, getting the Dorman 2LB uh, rebuilt and um, introducing you to the engine which in the workshop update a month or so ago I said was due in but hadn't arrived. We will be doing a teardown on that um, because they are the next two scheduled in engines um, and this one is the one after but um, while we're rebuilding the other two, we can sort all the parts for this. So um, anyway, thank you for watching um, and we'll see you in the next video. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching and see you next time.